Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Closer Encounters. I am your host, Clarence Mitchell, coming to you live from somewhere in Minnesota. like to be a guest on Closer Encounters, or maybe you know someone that would like to be a guest on Closer Encounters, or maybe you have a story to share, well please shoot us an email, closerencounters.info at gmail.com. Again, that's closerencounters.info at gmail.com. everything closer encounters updates all things going on check us out www.facebook.com forward slash closer encounters radio again www.facebook.com forward slash closer encounters radio and please don't forget to like follow and share Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Closer Encounters. Today is a big show, Contact with Closer Encounters. How's everybody doing today? (laughs) Awesome. All righty. What we're going to do today, uh, we're going to have some live talk. We got people coming in that's going to, we're going to do some interviews and listen to some stories. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty awesome. All righty. I just wanted to go around the room real quick and introduce everybody that's here with us today for all those that are coming in. Uh, up there in the top right corner, you all, you, everybody knows Omar from British Columbia. <laughs> He's the guy that uh, Elon Musk set the satellites up for so we can see him. <laughs> <laughs> Down right below me, Mr. Rich Giordano. He is from Goof on Radio. He is from the land of the Phoenix Lights. Awesome guy. He's got a hellacious uh, podcast and show that he does on YouTube. Uh, say hello, Rich. <laughs> hello, Rich. Hello. Glad to be here. That was an old joke. It's terrible. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> awesome. Not a problem. And, of course, on the bottom right, everybody knows Mr. Rob Yoxmeyer. Uh He's with Full Spectrum Universe, and he's here with us today. Hello, Mr. Rob. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Clarence. Cool. Wow, what a day, huh? We're going to have some awesome guests coming on, uh, some good talks. The main topic today is about contact with ETs or whatever. Right on now. <laughs> Hello. Hey, yes. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. You know, doing the best that we can in this uh uh, quarantine. <laughs> I'm a drywaller, so I got to go out. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'm Sorry, guy. To, I'll uh, start from the uh, uh, top left corner. Uh, that's our host, uh, Clarence Mitchell. Uh, Hi, Clarence. Uh, closer, closer Encounters. 
uh, this uh, event was uh, his idea and, uh, you know, I was like, uh, yeah, I'll hop on it since, uh, you know, I do yearly events like this. I was like, fantastic, let's do it. And uh, up on the uh, right side of me in the top corner is uh, Rob. And uh, in the uh, bottom the corner here is uh, Richard from uh, Goof on Radio. Hello. Uh, uh, Hello. That's a lot of uh, UFO and uh, ET type of uh, type of shows, and uh, we thought that um, you know you'd be a great guest uh, from uh, from the last talk that we had. I really enjoyed that, so I thought that uh, since this is like an ET contact UFO uh, based uh, based show, you have uh, a lot of experience in this, right? And uh, so I thought that uh, you know bring you on. And uh, and then you can uh, you know share your experiences with us and uh, you know answer any questions that uh, people may have. Uh, you know we'll dig into the uh, secret space program and uh, you know the uh, type of UFOs that are flying around and uh, you know just your you know basic round the table UFO talk. <laughs> sure, sure. Can so guys. Let's uh, familiarize ourselves with uh, with El. So maybe uh, we'll start in the top corner with um, with uh, Clarence. So Clarence, maybe you can introduce yourself to uh, El, say a few things, and then we'll move over to uh, Rob, and then uh, down to Richard, and then uh, and then we'll uh, get an insight into uh, El and uh, her experiences and uh, what she's had to uh, deal with for the last couple of decades. <laughs> All right. No, I just want to just want to say thank you for being here with us uh, today. Uh, you know, Omar told me quite a bit about you, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, my name's Clarence. Uh, you know, I host the show Closer Encounters, <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm also uh, a former abductee slash contactee, um, and uh, you know, so I've always been interested in this uh, for quite a long time, you know, I've been digging into it and stuff. So it's always good to meet somebody that, you know, in that realm. So <laughs> pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Thank you. Well, I yeah. guess I'll go next. My name, my name is Rob. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I personally have never had any contact. Uh, I do have an affinity to the stars. I, I believe I belong out there. Uh, I have a lot of spiritual based knowledge, frequency knowledge. Uh, somewhat of a bit of a historian at, at heart, and uh, Omar has also told me really good things about about you know that he's going to have a lot of great guests on today. So I really look forward to uh, hearing what you have to say, and uh, I, lo I love hearing stories about contact. So it's a pleasure to meet you. Full Spectrum Universe is my channel and my uh, Facebook page. If you have any questions about me, you can always go there and ask. But it's a pleasure to meet you. Al. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Oh, hi. I'm Rich hi. Giordano, and I am the owner and host of Goof on Radio Stream, and also the website owner of Goof on Network, which is Giordano's UFO Network, or Greatest UFO Network, however you want to use it. Um, 16 years, been in the field. I call out anybody who I think is lying, making money off lies or hoaxing and as well as being an experiencer and thousands of hours behind the camera uh, i use that experience and boots on the ground training to follow my instincts uh, and call out other people i do ghost hunts um more like a truther kind of guy you know I'm, if there's a situation like this covid I'm driving to the hospitals, hotels, downtown airports. You know, I'm doing it all trying to find out what's really going on. So that's kind of me in a little bit of a nutshell. And I don't know if I said it, but, you know, I've had experiences. Cool. It's a big nut. It's a big nut. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So, well, uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself for people that are watching that are not familiar with your uh, background and uh, and your experiences? And, um, you know, and then uh, we'll just, uh, after that, start tossing questions at you. Sure. So, Claire, you want to uh, make Elle's uh, screen full screen so that sure um, can. Yep. people get a good look? Yes, absolutely. I think they had a, enough look at us. <laughs> <laughs> Probably true. We're, we're a lot to take in at first, that's for sure. 
Did she go full screen? Yeah, she went full screen. Yeah. Now we're back in uh, panel mode. Oh, what okay. happened? So, there we go. Hi, I'm Al. I'm an ET contactee, and I'm also a secret space program asset. I had uh, done a 60 and back in the planetary corporations working on the cybernetics labs on Mars. So that's my experience in the secret space programs. I'm also a healer. I've done energy healing. Um, I'm also a psychic. So I've done memory retrievals working with other uh, SSP experiencers to retrieve memories and figure out what happened to them. So that's basically my background. And um, I've been doing this for about now six years. I came out with my disclosure about ETs and the secret space program on the Awakening Cosmic Reality Show. In 2015, I started discussing ETs and my abduction experiences with the reptilians from the age of two to 10, and my other ET contacts with the elves who are a human race, and they also interact with other ETs. So that's been mainly who I've had contact with. The elves, I've also had contact with Pleiadians, my higher self, Jenea, who's a human ET hybrid. Um, she's on the sixth dimension, I believe, from what she's told me. So that those are my uh, background experiences. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the secret space program? Sure. Well, again, the um, faction that I was with is planetary corporations on Mars. So what I was doing is working in the cybernetics labs, making biological human cyborgs, infusing them with nanotechnology. So that's my background. That was about 10 years. And um, I was put into the quantum leap time travel aspect of planetary corporations by the Time Corp. So there's time travel involved in the program that I was in for 60 years. Uh, planetary corporations, they developed the various spacecraft and ships to trade with the other uh, factions in the SSB. They also work with ETs on developing biological drug serums uh, to fix the autoimmune system, to fix diseases. So they do a lot of advanced medical stuff that's 200 years more ahead of what we have here on Earth. So that's what I had seen in the cybernetics labs. There's the holographic medical pods, there's the regeneration tanks, the biological drug serums. That's what they do in, the, in these cybernetic slabs. They create the biological human cyborgs for soldiers, for scouts to put out on missions and the um, regenerative kind of technologies for medicine and stuff. So that's what Planetary Corporations does primarily. It's a lot of advanced technology that they make for themselves, ETs, and other human factions of the SSB. Wow. How did you uh, get involved into the uh, secret space program? Now it's a secret, right? And, um, you know, how... I know you were very young when uh, when this started for you. So, it's like, how did this all, all start for you? Well, I was before the secret space program, I was taken into the Monarch program to be trained to, they broke me down like emotionally and physically to develop my psionic abilities. And I had been put in a cabin that's uh, somewhere near the Sierra Madre Mountains. And basically when you're taken, right? Um, and that was before I was 15. And I have some memories like, they make you, they drown you. They leave you out in the forest alone. So there's a lot of sensory deprivation and cold and stuff. You're out in the elements. So you're scared, you're alone. That's part of the toughening up process, the training. And then um, I have memories of being drowned behind a cabin in the water. Something, a tank was filled with water and I was being drowned. So that's the traumatic memory aspect of that. And then I remember being psionically trained to open Stargateway portals from point A to point B on, on Earth to go through it and to hold the portal with my ability, 
with my psionic ability. So training and controlling. So that's the first aspect of Monarch Solutions. And then that was kind of the prep for the secret space program to do the work on Mars for me. Um, and I had done many various jobs. I'd done a timeline, but the most that I remember about is the cybernetic slabs. That's the most vivid memories I have. And um, I had to train myself to do hypnosis and past life regression to be able to get all those memories back. Because when you have um, physical recall, memory recall, it comes back in bits and pieces. And then you have to sort out, well, what came first? Was it the ET abductions? Was it the Monarch Solutions training? Was it the SSP? What was first? So the ET stuff was first, Monarch Solutions second, and the SSP third from the hypnosis from what I was able to learn. You guys got any questions? <clears throat> <laughs> um, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> 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 I'm just trying to wrap my mind around. I'm sorry. I don't mean to <laughs> chuckle or anything, but it's just, uh, you know, I, 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 I know how people go through all these things, a lot of people and stuff. So I got to ask you, why uh, do you think that you were literally chosen for this? I mean, uh, you know, and if so, why? Why, you know, why you, why, you know? Well, for the SSP program, I was chosen because of my psionic abilities. I have uh, psychic abilities, so I can tell what's going on inside people's memories. I can literally walk through people's memories and pull stuff out of their head and tell them about it. Mm -hmm. um, I can sense what's in your auric field, what your soul is going through. I've been able to tell people, well, you know, for example, I have a friend who... Um, was buying a house in Costa Rica. And I said to the friend, well, you're gonna spend 125,000 USD on your house. And she's like, oh, come on, how do you know that? I'm like, it's, it's, it's flashing in neon yellow signs above your head. And a month later, indeed, she spent 125,000 USD with taxes on her house in Costa Rica. So I can see things in people's uh, energy fields and their auric field, what's happening with them now or what will happen. Um, sometimes it's money, sometimes it's health, sometimes it's other things going on in their lives. So I can sense that and see that. And sometimes I tell people if I think it's important, they'll either take it in or not. It depends on the situation. So I've had people be very offended um, when I told them, oh, you have cancer. So, um, yeah, they're like, I know I have cancer, but as a psychic, you're not supposed to blurt that out to me. You should know better. So I've had people be offended. I've had people be surprised, and I've had people who just took it in. And they're like, thank you for telling me what you know. That helps me. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. So how did you get involved in the space program itself? Well, the space program, like I said, my I was taken in through the quantum leap time travel. So they take you from the timeline that you're on, right? Mm -hmm. And it's basically they take you out of the loop from your timeline and put you in concurrently on Mars. So they can return you back home anytime they want or take you back to Mars. So there's an open time dilation matrix it's the same timeline, but it diverges. Mm. And it they keep it open so they can take you back and forth, basically. And you wouldn't even know it. It seems like you're still having your human existence at home while you're doing your SSP stuff on Mars. That's why it's called the Quantum Leap Time Travel Program, 16 back. So, so like a like a split life, in a sense. Yes, yeah. a split life, exactly. So you, you, you're still here on Earth doing your business, but you're also there doing your other business. That's got to be confusing, eh? Yeah, I was just going to say, how, how yeah. do you, all right, so how do you know when you're doing that part of it? I mean, do, do, I don't know how to ask that. <laughs> when well, you're sitting here 
and you're on Mars, how, how do you know you're actually there? You know what I'm saying? Well, I know that I was there because through the hypnosis, I was able to get medical information about biological drug serums. I have an autoimmune disorder called Hashimoto's encephalopathy where my autoimmune system attacks itself and ruins things internally. Uh, so I never knew how to deal with that. I never knew how to manage that condition or anything. And then when I started doing the hypnosis, I'm like, oh, um, there's this thing called intravenous immunoglobulin therapy and subcutaneous immunoglobulin therapy, different antibodies of plasma human plasma infusions and injections that could be uh, basically um, individualized for every person on earth for autoimmune disorders, for migraines, for other things, um, multiple sclerosis. I'm like, okay, um, I remember being infused with different plasma regimens on Mars to keep my autoimmune disorder under control. Because Mars has a different atmosphere, it's much heavier, there's less air oxygen there, so it's a denser atmosphere. So those conditions are horrible for me. So I remember being injected with a dermal injector in the neck with these plasma infusions that would make me healthy. And every couple of months they rotate the plasma infusion, right? So I was perfectly healthy on Mars, but when they put me back from the cybernetic slabs, after the SSP service, the 16 back, the autoimmune disorder came back and I couldn't control it. So through the hypnosis at the age of 29, when I was learning that through shamanism and stuff, these memories came back. Well, what are these biological drug serums? And in the hypnosis, immunoglobulin therapy, what is immunoglobulin therapy? It's human plasma infusions. That's what you had on Mars that was given to you in the labs because I was a cybernetics technician in the labs. So I was doing the um, nanotechnology aspect of the cybernetics stuff, and somebody else was giving me the drug serums to keep me healthy so I could keep doing my work. So that's what came up in the hypnosis. And then I'm like, okay, well, how is this applicable on Earth? Do we have biological drug serums here? The answer was yes. What is it called? Intravenous immunoglobulin therapy, it's given to you through IV. It's it's pure human plasma that's been separated from the blood. It's been checked for uh, bacteria. It's been checked for diseases. It's clean. It's clear. You you get it infused through the IV, and um, it gives you fresh antibodies, and it basically uh, reboots your autoimmune system and boosts it, and you become healthier. I had double blurry vision, which improved. I had um, walking impairment and a lot of joint pain and stuff. So that's improved. I have white matter lesions in my brain from that um, Neuralink implants that I had from the SSP. And those white matter lesions were dissolved with the immunoglobulin therapy. So a lot of things improved for me health-wise. My memory also improved because I'd lost my photographic memory. And through this immunoglobulin therapy process, I regained that. So these concepts of biological drug serums, that comes from Mars. We already have some of it here on Earth. So I correlated the hypnosis notes. What's on Mars? What's on Earth? How do I mesh that together and find an equivalent? Mm -hmm. So I had to do a lot of work through hypnosis of these memory retrievals. I call it actionable data. What can I get from my SSP memories and apply it here on Earth to heal myself? What can I get out of my SSP memories? I was working in cybernetics and um, nanomedicine and biological drug serums. So I could take from the biological serums that information, what I was having on Mars injected into me, which is biological, pure human plasma, different regimens except they can um, make it in the regenerator, you know, um, and synthesize it so they don't have to collect human blood. They can synthesize it differently. So you don't have to pull blood from a human anymore. Wow. So for those that uh, may not be familiar with uh, 16 and back, 
Uh, Not a 16, uh, 16 back. Can you uh, explain that a little bit to enlighten us a bit on people that may not understand what that is? Sure, it, well, 16 back is done through time travel. So they have technology that could literally warp time, create um, a matrix in time, like a bridge, right? Uh, there's portal technology, there's time alteration technology where they can, uh, again, control zero point and take you in and out of time at will with these technologies and splice timelines. So you can concurrently be on Earth and serving in the secret space program on Mars or other planets. And nobody would know you're even missing because your, your body is still here. Part of your essence of the soul, half of your soul is still here on Earth doing its business. The other half is there in the program. And so you're one person, but you kind of have a mini split because they could split you through time mm -hmm. travel and there's no consequences they can bring you back at any time through this zero point time travel technology i don't know what the device does it have any like. effect on you yeah i was just going to say so does what, it have what any effect on you in the waking yeah. world yeah yeah, yeah like, let's, certainly... say, let's say your school is somewhere else and then you know you're here i mean are you walking around like not to put in in bad terms but as in like dumbed down a little bit, maybe not yourself, a little bit distant <clears throat> while half of your soul is, is on Mars in a sense? I was never dumbed down. What happened is I have a lot of physical uh, ailments and pain and some emotional trauma that I've, I've been working through because when you're taken in and out like that, when you do a 60 and back, it does take a toll on your physical body. There's wear and tear because the technology is not perfect. It's it's not as developed as the ETs have for time travel, where, where there's no consequences. In these programs, there's still consequences, even with this advanced time travel technology. So um, I had it, medical issues, that of a 60-year-old. My vision was bad. I couldn't see long distance well. And um, it's like almost blind as a bat long distance. I could see fine close up, but not long distance. And now that I'm doing the uh, SCIG and after the IVAG, my vision has improved. My long distance vision is much better. So I could see, um, you know, street signs again. I could see, um, you know, when the light changes from green to red to, to walk across the crosswalk. So I could see that fine now. Um, but because of being in this time travel program, it does take a toll on your body, wear and tear. So when they return you, right, after your SSP service is over, you have the medical ailments as a result of what was done to you in the programs. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what the result on me was. Um, and also the, the trauma of having these Neuralink implants in my brain because they malfunctioned in 2017 when I was returned, right? So they malfunctioned. They started leaking this gold stuff from the nanofibers that were connected to my neurons. And I had a lot of migraines. I had brain inflammation and I started having white matter lesions. So I had to do psychic surgery to remove these Neuralink implants in my brain that were um, augmenting my psionic abilities and improving them. So the, the hardware was left in my brain, the nanotech hardware from the programs, and it malfunctioned because it was no longer being maintained in the labs. So that was another result of that. And uh, I mean, it was taken out through psychic surgery. Then I started doing the IVAG, SCAG, and it removed the white matter lesions in my brain and removed the inflammation. And that information is, again, comes from the hypnosis of what I was doing on Mars. How can I use biological drug serums to make myself more healthier and remove the damage done by the SSP stuff? So, hmm. yeah.
This is what, kind of when uh, did, sorry, go ahead, Rob. When did you have the first inkling that maybe you had been a part of that space program? Were you aware of this the entire time or did it take time for you to go back? I know you said hypnosis brought these memories about. What made you what was the first signal to you that maybe you should go get hypnosis or you know, try and find these memories that are inside of you. What gave you that tip? Like what, what tipped gave, you off to maybe that this happened? Yeah, what gave me the tip in 2016 that I had these memories is like bits and pieces of memory recall. Like, you know, not in dream state, but lucid. Lucid mm -hmm. dreaming when I'm awake. <clears throat> bits and pieces of making human cyborgs on Mars and some type of cybernetic slabs doing that for like 10, 12 years and doing other things in the SSP, other programs, like in this, in the planetary corporations, but other jobs in the programs, right? Because mm -hmm. they have different sections that they, they put you in every 10 to 12 years. And I had a lot of memories and also working with a um, ET attache, uh, insectoid, um, reptilian human looking attache named Zagor that he was assigned to work with me on Mars in the cybernetics labs from time to time he would check in how I was doing my work uh, what I was doing so I'm like and this guy comes and talks to me sometimes in reptilian you know like um, he doesn't speak English but through me he speaks reptilian I'm like wow that's that's weird. It's interesting. I'd like to know more. And so I learned hypnosis through shamanism. Hmm. I'm like, well, why don't I just do some um, memory hacking of my own with um, the shamanism teaching and with learning other types of memory retrieval, like past life regression, um, and also memory retrieval. What is it like to walk in people's memories? What's it like to be in their heads psychically? Hmm. Hmm. How many uh, How many other people do you know that have the same experience as you? I mean, do you know it? Like, is there a whole group of you? Or, you know, are you aware of that? Or, <laughs> you know? Well... I mean, I've done memory retrieval for many different people and no one experience is the same. They're all uniquely different to the individual for why they were taken by the ETs abducted or had ET contacts, why they were taken in the SSP programs. There's more than one SSP program too. So every person has had different experiences that I've worked with, that I've interviewed because I, I host my own um, online uh, radio show. And I've interviewed Penny Bradley, Tony Rodriguez. Uh, I've been in, inter in an interview with Randy Kramer twice. So um, there's also Johan Fritz recently who I interviewed. There's um, Rochelle, the SSB asset from Australia. There's so many people that I interviewed. All of their um, experiences, like they work with this faction or this faction of the secret space program. And a lot of them have been on Mars, on the moon. Um, so those are the key aspects of where they've been that are similar, where we've served. But their experiences are never the same as what I've experienced because everybody has their own story. Everybody has their own life path in these programs. So even though their stories are uniquely individual, and have some some similarities, but they're always different. I, I never get the same old thing out of every person. It's uniquely different to them. So why, why? Uh, I don't know how to ask this. Um, so why does this happen? What is it that they're doing or looking for when they do this with you, or you know, and with other people? Well, uh, a lot of the time what they're looking for is advanced psionic ability. What can you do? What can you do psionically? Is your telepathy good? Is your um, way of pulling out information from things is good? Can you open star gateway portals? Can you teleport somebody from point A to B psionically without needing a teleporter? What can you do for us? 
my the, my main ability is psionics, telepathy, uh, precognition. I sometimes get bits and pieces of the future, seeing the future of my own future and others' future. I can do medical intuitive scans. I can scan your auric field, your torsion field, your energy field, whatever you call it. I can tell you what's going on with you externally, like medically, and I could heal that with energy. That's a, an ability that I have. I can go through your memories and pull stuff out for you. So what can I do for others? And that's why I was taken in the SSP because I'm good at gathering information. I'm good at collating information. I'm good at taking in medical information without having the training for it and digesting it and applying it. So that's why they took me in the cybernetics labs because I'm just good at coordinating everything and putting everything together and doing it. So that's why they took me. And because psionically, I, um, I was good to get the implants because I could take it and use it. I, I, I got to ask this and, and I don't want to sound rude or nothing like that, but do you feel that like person like Corey Goody. Now he, he claims the same thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> is it, is it the same thing? I mean, <laughs> are, are yours and his stories the same? I, you know what I'm saying? Are, are you guys in the same kind of a thing or well, is this different or, you know what I mean? Do, do you know who Corey Goody is or his story? Of course I know who Corey Good is. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, uh, I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. I'm a little confused. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because I've heard I've heard other people say the same thing, and I'm just trying to correlate the the uh, the similarities. I guess is what I'm saying. So the similarities are not similar. Corey Good was on spaceships doing fixes for warp drive engines for communication systems. That's what Corey Good was doing in the secret space program. He was more off planet on ships. I was more on planet on Mars in the cybernetics labs attached to the planetary corporation spaces. So Corey Good's story and my story are not the same. Okay, so that let's differentiate that. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, you know, uh, no, go ahead, go ahead, please. Yeah, well, um, the way I met Corey, honestly, is he started threatening and attacking me for disclosing my SSP stories and calling me a fake and a liar. And no kidding, really? Wow. Yeah. Corey that's... Good did that? Whoa. Oh. Wow. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. go ahead, go ahead. Uh, it's just... amazing. It is. I just read some um, emails on, yeah. uh, on that as well. Um, you know, I haven't brought those emails out and I haven't uh, mentioned anything to anyone about the emails that you had sent me that uh, the communication that you had with Corey, so I've kind of you know, kept that private between us. But uh, you know, I'm glad that this question came up because I was going to ask you the same thing, is that uh, you know, Corey Good is talking about pretty much the same thing as you are, but with like two different uh, missions. Right, yeah. He was well, threatening you because you were, uh, you were about to affect his revenue stream, I believe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Nothing lucky. personal, just money, you know? Well, wasn't even money because I'm not making money from my disclosure on YouTube and well, sure. messages. But you could, and you would might you might if somebody picked you up as in like a David Wilcox kind of person who had other revenue streams to prop your platform. You could potentially make some money out of it too. I'm not saying that you would or you're that type of person, um, but, let's but just, you saw that as a threat. I'm sure. Yeah. But what Corey doesn't understand is because of my autoimmune disorder and my migraines, I can't travel outside of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I can't physically board planes, go to Colorado, film shows with places like Gaia or something else, or go on the circuit on conferences. I can only do local things physically here where I am. So Are I've improved... I've improved my health, but not to the amount where I can just board planes, hop somewhere and do a conference. Well, another question I have is, and it's going to sound crazy, but yeah, I have a lot of the same abilities you do, precog, healing. Why didn't they pick me? I would have loved to do it. Why didn't they pick me? <laughs> like, you know, um, I would have loved you, to go out there and do that. 
Do you have an affinity for, Same here. for playing with technology, for sitting around for hours, looking at genetic information, splicing that? Um, Who doesn't? Very, yeah, well, I, I, I can sit for hours and just read medical mm. things and yeah. work through that. So they take people who are uh, very logically focused, who get sit there for hours just sifting through information, um, mm. who can, you know, remove their emotion and be neutral and just do what they have to do. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, Seriously, um, I always wondered why I was never involved. And I asked, believe it or not, exactly. ask and ask and ask Corey Good and David Wilcock to include me and I won't say a word. And I don't think that's fair. How do certain people get into it and certain people don't? Do you have a different biological makeup or is there something different with you or me? Yeah, I'm ha I'm half hybrid L and half human and a lot of hybrid other things. So I don't even think of myself as human anymore. Wait, wait, I, did you say half hybrid elf? No, L, the L race. I, I really do thought you said elf, I promise. Uh, no. That, well, no, you know, no. yeah, I'm, I learned a lot of new stuff today, so I thought I learned something else. Um, <laughs> Hybrid okay. elf would be pretty cool too, though. I mean, bows yes. and arrows would be your thing, you know. Well, I've uh, I had a client actually whose past life was of an ET type of being that looked like an elf. Oh, huh. yeah, That's I've heard cool. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, no, I'm L. It's okay. um, if you guys have heard of the um, ancient races, right? Like, yeah. uh, that Anunnaki. Of, yes, yes, but they're L are not Anunnaki, they're a different type of a human race that's been around here for like a million years ago, something like that. Okay. And they seeded different knowledge repositories with crystal stuff. And, um, in Peru, they have underground cities and stuff in Peru yeah. and other jungles, so that stuff is yet to be unearthed. They have stuff in Egypt as well you know what's under the sphinx yeah and the tunnels between the pyramids yeah. all of that stuff is there like evidence of um the ancient builder races coming to earth and leaving things behind so they're like the ancestors of the ancient builder race they're their ancestors cool. yeah yeah hey rich yeah. rich maybe me and you should make our own secret space program because they didn't pick us we'll just do yeah. our own one the alternative secret space. That's a fact. That's oh. a fact. Our own faction. The Robin Rich faction. I don't see what's That's wrong it. with that. That's awesome, man. I, I mean, I, I've really honestly sent him emails and also I used to say it on my show. Come on, man. I know you listen. Uh, but I haven't done well, it in years. I gave up. Well, honestly, <laughs> um, I'm so lucky mm -hmm. I was able to remove myself from Mr. Corey Good. Yeah. And oh, yeah. was never associated with David Wilcock because, um, you know, there's this horrid, ugly thing going on right now. <laughs> if you guys have noticed all the mudslinging and the it's lawsuit always, crap. Oh, constantly. oh yeah. yeah. Constantly. Plagiarism and all that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, it took me a lot. It took me two years to basically get rid of Corey. Wow. Really? Wow. Harassment. Wow. Uh, I've seen the. Uh, wow, can you yeah, give me that dirt? Can between, you give me the links? Uh, yeah, I've seen the correspondence between you and uh, and Corey, and you know, it's it's nice to hear that um, that you finally shed yourself of him. Because I remember the last time we talked, you were pretty stressed out um, over this uh, Corey Good thing, right? and then I think the last talk that we did was like two years ago. Well, apparently behind my back, he was sending people emails calling me a fake and a liar privately through email. It's not enough like that he did not. it on. It's, Can it's, you disclose the whole situation to us? Can you, from start to finish, can you disclose that situation? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure people would love to know about it. Well, Corey went public on Gaia in 2016. I went public about my SSP experiences in 2016, just on my own YouTube channel, doing my own thing and my own website messages from Star Traveler. So right. he was disclosing, I was disclosing, he was just disclosing on Gaia TV on a popular platform or Gaia at the time. So he was making the big bucks. He was on conferences. He was doing the shebang. I was just quietly doing my own archival 
interviews and videos of my SSP experiences, and ET contact experiences and abductions. So just minding my own business. And then uh, a friend of mine had gone to contact in the desert and mentioned my name to Corey. Um, and then Corey's like, who is that girl? She should contact me and I'm going to vet her whether she was in the SSP or not. And at the time I had published a uh, presentation of all the, at the time I was calling it interplanetary corporate conglomerate, but it's not, it's called planetary corporations. That's what's on Mars. Mm -hmm. So I had published the video with the locations of all the Mars bases for planetary corporations, interplanetary corporate conglomerates, same thing. It's just, I don't call it that, I call it planetary corporations because that's what I have for my hypnosis stuff. Um, I published that, he got a hold of it and he's like, no, you were never an SSP asset. You were um, military abductee, military industrial um, complex abductee. I'm like, no, I don't agree with you. That's how the email started. I don't agree with you. I I know that I was an ET, an ET contactee and an SSP asset. I, I, I have the information. He's like, no, no, you're lying and you're a fake on social media after that email exchange. I also shared with him that I did have an experience with meeting a blue avian type being. And we discussed the rainbow body bridge, which is basically, you know, when you are having a spiritual experience, it's your astral traveling and the rainbow body bridge is like your astral body, light body, whatever. So I discussed that experience with him. I've also had inner earth experiences, meeting um, various beings in inner earth for healing and stuff and crystals. So I told him about that and he's like, well, you're copying me. It's your same experiences. I'm like, no, it's not. I'm not claiming I've met blue avians. So, um, and then I went and read Ashiana Dean's information while I had been reading it. And lo and behold, page 248 and 246 in her Voyager's books, she talks about blue avians calling them the Azurites, that they're here to help us with ascension. They have 48 stranded DNA. So, and she calls them the guardians and that she met them in Hawaii. So what is Corey talking about? Blue avians, guardians. Right. Well, one place where your stories differ, not to keep bringing up Corey Good, is he said that they used to pick him up via spacecraft. So he wasn't, from what I understand, he wasn't going halfway like you were, half of your soul being no, transported. He went full body. Right. He went yeah, full he body. He wasn't here on Earth. He left Earth. He went is full there, body. Is there a difference maybe in your posts as in, where you were stationed, the fact that he was actually on the spaceships and you were in the facilities, is that why that differs a little bit? Well, my whole body was on Mars and my soul is just, it's a halfway split between Earth and here. So so your, your body was in both places as well? Yes, yes. It's called bilocation and can be done. So okay. I was mainly on the cybernetics labs on Mars, uh, attached to different bases of planetary corporation. I also remember sometimes being on space station platforms that orbit Earth and Mars between, and they, they're cloaked. I remember doing that, um, but I mainly was doing the cybernetics lab stuff. Corey was servicing different ships in space. Okay, mm -hmm. I gotta I gotta ask this because it just jumped into my mind when you were saying it. Would this be a really hardcore form of astral projection? No. no, no, totally different. Okay, totally different. I know astral projection. I've done astral projection, and um, no, it's not astral projection. It's time travel um, matrix split of the timeline. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier you had mentioned that there's uh, more than one secret space program. Can you uh, tell us about that a, a little bit? Because from what I understand and when, from what most people would understand is that there's only one um, secret space program that possibly uh, Werner von Braun may have had a hand in. 
Um, and then you mentioned that there's more than one secret space program. Well, Werner Robin Braun sure had a hand in planetary corporations uh, forming the basis first on the moon, then on Mars. So what they did, the US Navy and Army took Werner von Braun's schematics of his anti-gravity space stations, the donut, the donut space station. Yep, yep. Project Horizon. They took his rockets, they loaded everything up, and they started building bases on the moon mm -hmm. underground first. Project Horizon, have a look at that. Um, and they took his schematics, threatened his family, right? They threatened his family. Um, that's how they got him to help, to help them build the space stations first. They threatened him, his family. So he was coerced to work with the early uh, US Navy and Army elements. So what would form the US SSP and planetary corporations is part of that. That's the built out version. So the US Army and Navy were no better than Hitler because Hitler did the same thing to them with their rocket program from Nazi yeah, Germany. Yeah, well, Hitler killed millions of uh, Well, of course, humans. but yeah. threatening cost. somebody's family is, pretty, is a pretty dastardly yeah. deed too, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, they didn't, yeah, they didn't kill his family, his children, but they threatened his wife, his children, um, and they got him to work behind the scenes, making... He, he gave up all of his schematics for these space stations. So is so, there like a intra-solar and then um, outside of the solar system secret program or like, I, I st I'm, not, I'm still not catching it. There's yeah, both. Me either. I'm, yeah, I'm there's trying both. to figure this out. <laughs> well, yeah, the planetary corporations, for example, makes spacecraft that can go beyond the speed of light light so they have the uh gyroscope drives fusion drives em warp drives crystalline drives um kind of like a warp drive yeah yeah or plasma drives they make it all they make different mm -hmm. types of ships so they can go um now is this all right i gotta i just gotta ask you is this reverse engineering does this all stem back to the area 51 ordeal or is this something totally different this is something totally different. Reverse engineering of spacecraft happens on Earth. Mm. Planetary corporations makes their own. They don't. Re Sometimes they reverse engineer ET technology, but they mainly produce now their own spaceships with their own technology. Mm. So that's Earth. Mm. That's Earth and technology being utilized in these systems, or where did they find the technology to begin with to make these programs? They make it themselves because they have their own infrastructure and bases on Mars and no, 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 right. But where, jobs. where did the plans from them come? Did they, did they make these discoveries on their own, or did they somehow use uh, help, or were they um, told, or something like that? They, they make their own with? plans. They've had for like almost a hundred years their own infrastructure on Mars. They make mm -hmm. their own plans. They don't, they're not dependent on, on Earth or even the moon basis anymore. What's on Mars is totally independent and run. A lot of the bases are planetary corporations and there's other SSP factions. It's not just one program, there's many factions. So are they interstellar connected in other places then or just on Mars? I mean, they're interstellar connected. Like I said, they make spacecraft that go beyond the speed of light. They can go to other galaxies. They can go to other solar systems. It's they're not stuck to the to our solar system. And those those ships are of human design. Human design sometimes with ET collaboration because there are humanoid ETs on those Mars bases. So they work with humanoid ETs. Wow. So the, the humanoids on Mars have been there for thousands of years, shall we say? And since, it's, the and since the beginning of Mars. Right. Got hmm. that. That's, that's what I was trying to understand if they're actually humanoids from Earth or they're Martians to the core. You get what I mean? Well, they're humanoids from, let's just say the SSP program, planetary corporations, that grew out of the US Army and Navy stuff going back to the 1950s, 1940s, 30s. So mm -hmm. the planetary corporation, the origins is from the US Army and Navy, but now they're separate from that. 
they've grown out. Just imagine yeah. when you have 100 to 80 years to develop something on your own outside of US influence now. Just imagine what you can do. You have your own basis, you have your own spacecraft that you make, you have your own biological drugs that you make. You can- No regulations, they can experiment with pretty much anything. And they do, they do. Mm -hmm. So what, what is what is the plan? What's what's the object behind all this? I, I'm yeah, that's kind of what I was wondering too. Like, what's the I, end game? Yeah, what is the end end game for this? <laughs> I mean, you know, there's got to be an objective to it somehow, or, or for something, right? Oh, of course there is. Planetary corporations is all about building biological human cyborgs that look perfectly human. It's don't think of it as Terminator with where they could just dissolve and, you know, reform and have weapons shooting out. It's not like right. that. It's, um, say, you guys are familiar with nanomedicine, nanotechnology. You fuse yeah, that with, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you fuse that with a human body and you have humans 3.0. Like eugenics. Yes, eugenics, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that's the plan, transhumanism, eugenics. Mm -hmm. So what happens to the real human species then we just disappear no you don't disappear you coexist alongside the human 3.0 for what <laughs> reason though i don't that that's the thing though what would be the reason behind it why 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 do it because you can you can make it you can do it that's why <laughs> it's like why did you climb that mountain because it was yeah there. well i yeah <laughs> I, I get that but i mean what what is the plan with them? I mean, what what are they supposed to do when they're here, or you know, whatever? I mean, what make it uh, make advancements, build more technology, build more medicine, build more infrastructure? Does this have anything to do with the uh, with the gray alien that we're all familiar with? Some say that um, you know that they're kind of uh, stuck, right? That they can't um, evolve any further, and that they're trying to. Um, use the human DNA and trying to evolve themselves somehow? No, that's totally separate. That's the gray Gray's agenda. No, mm -hmm. um, what, what's happening on Mars? Planetary corporate, I can only speak to the planetary corporations. They like to make advancements in nanotechnology and be building better human 3.0 with transhumanism attached to it, expand their, you know, uh, building their spacecraft build more, advance more technology, medicine, more, more, and more. They never have enough. They always like to make technological and medical advancements and improve on what they've already done. That's their core agenda. That's what they do. They're very happy being left alone on Mars to just do that, never be exposed to Earth. Here's a, an interesting question coming from YouTube for, um, from Lee Bodge. Uh, he says, um, I'm not familiar with nanomedicine. Can your guest explain that? Okay, well, you know what nanoparticles are? Yeah. Yep. So that's what nanomedicine is. You can take nanoparticles and you can make different sets of infusions with it. Say you have cirrhosis in the liver, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you take some kind of a nanoparticle that can, that that makes similar enzyme as the liver. So you somehow through medicine delivery system, it could be through the blood or the dermal, right? You inject that and it, it attaches to the RNA of the cells. The nanoparticle attaches to the RNA of the cells that's close to the liver and it removes the cirrhosis. That's one type of nanomedicine, what nanomedicine can do. There's also the Neuralink implants, which augment your psionic abilities. There's this um, report that came out, Cyborg 2050, that was done for the DOD, where they're planning to do the Neuralink, Neuralink implants. Say somebody has um, lost part of their vision, their retinas are burned. Mm -hmm. So they, they make these Neuralink implants very small, right? even smaller than microchips. They implant that into your brain with different um, fibers that connect to your neurons and th this little implant behind your eyes and you can see again. 
they rebuild your retina. The implant rebuilds your retina or improves some of the function of the leftover retina. So that's Neuralink implants in nanomedicine. Hmm. Okay, okay. I so I'm, I'm kind of, I go back to when you're mentioning this nanotechnology, my base reference to that would be uh, like seven of nine from uh, from Voyager where they take, uh, you know, some of her nanocells and uh, the doctor reprograms those, uh, those nanocells and injects them into someone who needs them. And then these nanocells would go into the bloodstream and go where they're supposed to go and then fix the damage that, uh, that's, that they're trying to fix. That's kind of something what you're talking about, right? Yeah, that's the simplistic analogy of describing it. But they take nanoparticles and infuse that into the cell in the body where it needs to go to fix something. So the nanoparticles do need to attach to something within the body mm -hmm. to do the fix. So you do that through the RNA because there's DNA and there's human RNA. So mm -hmm. you can pro program RNA. You can attach the nanoparticle in the RNA to go to the cell in the body to do the fix. So that's the gist of how nanomedicine works. Okay, very interesting. Um, Lee Bodge here again on uh, from, <laughs> from YouTube. Uh, I'm very busy, that guy. Uh, he says, um, um, oh, where did that question go now? Um, he says, uh, can your guest provide any equations used during her Mars work? What do you mean by equations? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not catching on, uh, on uh, that. Okay. I'm assuming what he's talking about is, um, you know. I the, think he's looking for like quantum physics kind of stuff you know, or something. Yeah. yeah, I can't give you that. Sorry, I wasn't, I was involved with autoimmune stuff, biology. Look, I'm not a scientist. I'm only the end user of what I remember. So I can't give you any equations, even if I wanted to. Yeah. I, I can't <laughs> replicate any of what I did. I was just the end user in the lab using the technology and doing that stuff. I don't remember any equations. The only equation I remember is the biological drug serums and the subcutaneous immunoglobulin therapy and the IVAG. That equation, what it does is you have human plasma, right? If you have inflammation in the human body, the plasma um, removes the inflammation and it also lowers the cytokines in the body, the antibodies of the cytokines, because that's what causes the inflammation in the body, it can be in your brain, it can be in your legs, wherever. So if you reduce the inflammation in the body, you reduce the autoimmune response that's attacking your body. You mm -hmm. lower the cytokine antibodies and enzymes and proteins. You lower that and the inflammation goes down and your body reaches a better homeostasis. Outcome. So is this like stem cell research? That's a whole other field. No. Of regenerative <laughs> I had to ask. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I, dealt, I, I, dealt, <laughs> I dealt with the human plasma. You take the human plasma separated from the blood and you have different antibodies. You have IgG, you have IgM, you have other different types of antibodies that could fix something in your body when it's infused with the plasma. So that's what I know. That's what I dealt with. Stem cell research, you could take stem cells from yourself. It could be filtered, centrifuged, cleaned out, and infused back into yourself. If you have a festering wound on your skin that's not healing, it's going to necrosis, your stem cells will fix that and close it up. But you have to remove the festering stuff first. If you have gangrene, you have to like literally remove that and then do the stem cell infusion. Wow. To regenerate so, the skin and prevent scarring. So nanite particle technology is something that, that basically goes for the uh, a living organism. But you yes. say also you were in the cybernetic side. Is that classified cybernetics, the yeah. nanite particle technology? Yep, that's classified cybernetics indeed. So cool. basically it's using the electro uh, spark that we have in our bodies then, right? Is that is that how it's supposed to work? It's basically connected to the, uh, oh, 
what do they call that? You know, because your body has so much electric uh, impulses in it, right? We have electromagnetic fields in the body or torsion fields. That's Star what the cell. Well, stem cells are cells in your body that your body makes. So mm -hmm. those are stem cells. You have your electromagnetic energy field, your torsion fields. So Neuralink implants, in my case, they were connected. There's four Neuralink implants that you can't pick up on the MRI. And they have the nanofiber uh, casings that attach to the neurons of your brain to amplify your psychic ability. That's what, that's the um, circuitry hardware, whatever, etheric implants, whatever you want to call it. That's how, what I had in the left side of my brain that amplified my psionic abilities. And then they malfunctioned because even advanced technology sometimes can go mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Is this, would this be part of Morgellons disease? With well, the fibers oh, wow. and stuff? Wow. No, well, I mean, different nanoparticle <laughs> technology can be programmed to do different things. If they want you to have Morgellons, you will. So, okay, so that's an introduced kind of, well, I'm only asking because of the fiber to talk about, and, you know, they get these things that come out of people's skins that are attached to, yeah. uh, like, the second or third layer, Yeah, right? yeah, well, and, that, that's nanoparticle, too, but, no, what I had in my brain was Neuralink implants, so it, it was gold case nanoparticle fibers, long fibers that attach to my neurons in the brain. So that's not Morgellons. Okay. Those are well, different. Well, I mean, well, I'm just saying that's what they call it is Morgellons, but I'm wondering if it's the same technology what you're talking about, if that, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think the technology could be similar because nanoparticles, and that can be programmed to heal you or it can be programmed to destroy you either way. Mm -hmm. so, so Clarence, you're saying that Morgellons is a byproduct of these nanoparticles. Well, Somehow that's what I'm, I'm, nanoparticles I'm, in their systems, and now it's a, from a, a helpful nanite uh, particle to a, a disease, in a sense. Is that what you're trying to say? Because well, that's what I'm, it sounds like. Yeah, in a sense, I'm 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 kind of putting a connection together here. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the way she describes it, that's what it sounds like to me, because of these colored fibers and stuff. Yeah, you know? also those fibers when you place them under. They have they, electronic. Uh, they don't burn. Right. No, they don't burn. But my no. Neuralink implants leak gold because the, the nanofiber particles were made out of gold, gold nanoparticles. And that leaked in my brain and caused inflammation and white matter lesion scarring. And then that's what you had to, uh, that's what you got the uh, psychic surgery to, uh, hmm. to remove that. Yes. And then I had to work on my own afterwards to remove the scarring, the white matter lesion scarring left over from that. What and, exactly is psychic surgery? Oh, psychic surgery is just using energy like from the universe or from source, wherever, the healing energy, wherever you can get it, you use it to literally remove something energetically and physically from whatever organ you're working on in the body or whatever. So it came out of you or it dissipated inside of you and dissolved to nothing? Dissipated and dissolved to nothing out of my brain. Hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, I've talked to several people who are involved in in uh, things like that. Uh, the person that comes to mind is uh, Jillian Hendricks. Yep, uh, I just think of Jillian. Yep. Yeah, she's a healer herself. Yep. Uh, she works with uh, energy. And uh, she's discussed that, um, you know, this uh, psychic uh, surgery on uh, a number of different occasions. Uh, I've got another friend, uh, Aaron Fowler, uh, who is a uh, psychic shaman himself. And uh, he's talked about uh, energy healing and, uh, and, and psychic surgery. So, you know, that's, um, you know, like you're right on the ball with that. So I've, I've heard many, many people uh, talk Leonard, about uh, Leonard O'Neill talks right. about it. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I do that with my wife as well because when she's in pain, uh, what I'll do is I'll I'll take my hand and and I'll yeah. begin to concentrate and uh, and then I'll I'll just keep my hand like maybe a half an inch, three quarters of an mm -hmm. inch, uh, you know, above her um, skin in the exactly area that's in pain, and then I'll I'll use my energy and attempt to 
try to fix that. And then I would say that's part of like psychic surgery as well, right? Uh, yeah. Ellen? Yes. So I'm a that, psychic surgeon then. That's well, awesome. I didn't know that. Well, what you have to do, don't tap into your own energy from your own body. Take it from source field because energy yeah, from, the ether. Is, from the ether. Yes, take it from yeah. the ether and concentrate it like a laser point and adjust, adjust the amounts of energy that you use to heal somebody. I have a perfect example of what went wrong in one of these things. So my cat um, got GI tract um, irritation recently. Mm -hmm. from cat kibbles the cat mm. kibbles were uh dry food were not good uh, i'm not going to mention the company they were compromised so she got constipation she couldn't go anymore because we couldn't feed those kibbles to her she was mm -hmm. vomiting from the kibbles so um she stopped vomiting but then she had the constipation so my mom asked me can you do some energy healing on the cat I'm like, sure, I've never worked on animals before. And this is a small creature. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm like started doing the energy healing on her to adjust her bowels and her intestines. So she, you know, would start doing poop reduction again. Mm -hmm. And I did this for four days and boy, poor cat got diarrhea because I overdid oh, no. it. <laughs> oh god i adjusted her bowels and intestines too much i should have just yeah. done a day of that because after a day i i saw her pooping fine but i still kept working and adjusting i'm like oh this is fine i'm working on an animal i'm working on a cat i, I wasn't doing this intentionally to hurt my pet i just mm -hmm. didn't know how much energy to apply yeah and um so I realized that on humans, you can apply more energy, and that's good. On animals, you have to hold back, not so much. Is it, is it because of our vibrational distortion, that because it, uh, it's different from the animal kingdom, that um, uh, it may have had that uh, negative effect on no, uh, your no, cat? No, it's, it's based on size. It's really that's just pretty cool, though, to say yeah. that you... You know, you have your psychic energy gave your cat the squirts. It did. Pretty, and pretty I, awesome. I just did it. I overdid it on the healing because even one day, like less than five minutes of healing, less than five minutes on the cat day one. And uh, after an hour, she went and did poop. Fine poop. It wasn't too wet. It wasn't too dry. It was long and nice and looked good. I had it checked. Mm. But after you know like three days oh god it uh wet and ploppy and stinky no oh, poor cat <laughs> well, well, thankfully, looking at my little Gilbert. <laughs> yeah thankfully it only lasted two days so um I, I said too much energy like i literally i could see internally what's going on with organs and stuff mm -hmm. so i was moving her bowels intestines palpitating you know vibrating like enjoying doing the healing but i overdid four days of healing like, yeah um, note to Still self the best, best tag you ever had i saw my psychic energy gave my cat the squirts that's for me that's that's epic that's and, epic and, and, but uh um, we i'm dirty like that but it's epic <laughs> we were we were considering going to the vet to get a diuretic because she wasn't doing it she wasn't going to the bathroom big and then I, my mom's like, well, we just went to the vet twice to get her gravel shots for the vomit. So I don't want to go to the vet again. Can you, like, just do your stuff and uh, make your poop? Yeah, it would have cost you 600 bucks. Like, every time you go to the mechanic, it's $600 to fix the car. Every time you go to the vet, it's $600 to fix something else that's wrong with the cat. Exactly. So my mom had confidence in me that I can make the cat poop with an energy healing. And I did, but I overdid it. So oh. let me ask you, uh, El. You mentioned earlier that um, that you know you've got some uh, medical issues. Now I'm wondering if those medical issues arise from your experience with the SSP, and if so, why hasn't the nanotechnology been used on you to uh, try to heal you to uh, you know make you you know, 100% functional so that you're not suffering and, you know, having to deal with these medical issues on a, on a daily basis? 
I'm out of the SSB. I'm no longer serving in planetary corporations, so I don't have access to nanotechnology anymore to prop me up my health. Mm -hmm. I don't have access to that. So when they release you from these programs, any augmentation that you had, any medical treatments that were keeping you healthy, they revoke all of that when you're back on Earth. You don't have access to that. There's like no, there was a question earlier in the uh, comments about um, SSP uh, retirement program. So I'm assuming there's uh, nothing like that available? No, there's nothing like that. Um, and there never will. The SSP does no not. No 401ks. No, the SSP does not compensate you for anything. Um, I was really lucky through the hypnosis regression that mm -hmm. I could put them, pull out the medical information that was in my head about mm -hmm. the biological drug serums. And that really does prop me up, the autoimmune system. Um, I can go outside more. I am more upwardly mobile. So I have improved my health with doing the uh, plasma infusions for two years. It's been a lifesaver. A, a good question we I, I just saw in the comments myself from B. Baker was, what is your feelings about the Space Force? Now that you've done the SSP and, and you know, the U.S.'s new initiative to do a Space Force, what, how do you feel about that? Oh, I feel, it's a, good, take on that? I feel it's a good cover-up for the other goodies that they're, you know, they have for on Mars and the moon. Because they already have bases. They already have um, spacecraft that can fly around in our solar system and outside to other galaxies. So Space Force is kind of like, NASA, you know, cover it up. It's, it's, oh, mm. we're going to make these space stations in the future. We're going to have bases on Mars and the moon in the future. It's down to the road stuff that we're going to do. So it's to cover up the infrastructure that's already there. You think so the space satellites space are, yeah, to, you, to disclose information in a sense? Well, to leak information as they want it in drip drip for what they already have eventually. Oh, look, we have the TR-3B. We can disclose that through Space Force eventually. Hmm. I kind of thought about the same thing when uh, when this whole Space Force thing came up. Actually, I went back to your interview and, uh, and I thought about that and I was like, hmm, I wonder if this is somehow connected to the uh, secret space program and that they already have this technology and in order for disclosure to come, they needed to create something like this in order for them to begin to leak that information. So to, you know, like to save face, right? Like they haven't been lying to humanity for like the last hundred years and that they actually have this um, the technology and uh, they just can't come out and say, okay, well, we have this, we have this, we haven't told you in uh, the last hundred years, but here it is. So it kind of makes sense as to why they would create the Space Force and then to slowly divulge that information and that technology that they currently have, um, you know, however they got it. Yeah, well, they're not going to divulge everything all at once because, yeah. remember, this is 200 years more advanced what they have on Mars than what's mm -hmm. here on Earth. So I, I think they just released the patent for the TR-3B and um, some of the the generator, anti-grab generator stuff that they're working on that the Navy has. So those two patents are released. You think any of this uh, Elon Musk satellite thing has anything to do with that? Maybe, maybe <clears throat> not. I don't know. I don't look into that. I'm not really interested. What I'm interested <clears throat> is what ne Elon Musk is working on is the neuro Neuralink implants. Mm -hmm. His yeah. Neuralink company. That's yeah, what I've yeah. been looking yeah. into. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, it's propagating the Mars agenda here on Earth through transhumanism and making mm -hmm. us into psionic cyborgs eventually. Hmm. What I think it is. So you think, pretty, he's getting his, uh, you think he's getting his ideas from this other deal or, or not? Or I, I think I think he knows of things and maybe things were disclosed to him to kickstart what's going on here on Earth. So I don't mm. think Elon Musk is totally out of the loop. I think he is in the loop for some things. Mm -hmm. Well, also well, we know you, he's under contract with the military and stuff. Yeah. So I'm just kind of if, wondering. Yeah. Think about it this way too: if something's disclosed to you and you know that it's possible, 
it's just basically finding a way to manufacture or to get that technology available to yourself. Exactly. So knowing that, that there is some kind of way to make it happen, you just have to explore every avenue to make it happen, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's building this Starship thing. He's doing the Neuralink implants. They're supposed to um, start trials on humans in 2020. So... Hmm. So and his, saying that, what, how do you feel about the Starlink program with using a grid to literally right. use access for, to 5G access for the entire world? Is that something that you would see as, as beneficial? Could it be detrimental? What is your take on it? Well, I see it as detrimental because I'm very sensitive to 5G or 4G technology. Let's say my router <laughs> downstairs is running on 3G. Wow. I'm so sensitive to electromagnetic frequencies and fields. I cannot be anywhere near 4G, 5G, 9G, or whatever they're planning to bring out. It makes me sick physically. So, no thank you. Huh. Well, that, that leads to the discussion of what's really going to happen to a lot of the people on Earth who have that same sensitivity that you do. Is that going to cause civil uprising? I mean, is it going to be a third of the population gets, you know, affected or afflicted, shall we say, by that 5G or 4G, whatever the case may be. Well, you'll you'll have to move to the country and as far away from the towers as you possibly can, or won't whatever. be able to yeah. when it's surrounded yeah. by the earth. <laughs> That's correct. Also, at the same time, from it. they use yeah. different types of satellites. There are no towers for yeah. this 5G. You know, the initialization of 5G. It's basically. Uh, rotating satellites around orbit and also the antennas that are on cars, planes. So if that's the case, let's say a plane flies over with that 5G connectivity from wherever you are and the whole, you know, it'll affect you. But the whole basis of that specific program is to get low latency internet and 5G signal everywhere, even in the Sahara Desert, which is one of the most isolated places on the planet. Well, pray it doesn't happen so quickly and pray it doesn't make all of us sick. That's all I can say about it because um, that would make me concerned because I'm sensitive to different frequencies of technology and stuff. I could literally sense it. If it's near me or above me or below me, I'll know about it. All right. There's an interesting um, comment by uh, B. Baker. Uh, it says, uh, Elon was sweating like a pig. In that neural link announcement, he clearly was nervous. Maybe he didn't want to do the project. Maybe he didn't. I mean, um, look, when you're making neural link implants, there's a lot of responsibility not to kill somebody when you implant mm -hmm. them with it because it's new technology. You don't know what it's going to do. It can fry a person's brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leave them a vegetable after all said and done. Well, they're not dead, know. but they're, they're literally not cognitively thinking anymore, I'm sure. Oh, look, I had advanced Neuralink implants and it leaked fiber gold and it almost fried my brain. Well, imagine oh. being in the very beginning of that testing, especially on this planet. <laughs> Could you imagine? Do you think any of those implants that Dr. Lear took out had anything to do with that too? Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with Dr. Lear's work. Uh, Patient 17, I think it was called the, the documentary. Well, the one movie, yeah. 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 Uh, um, some of those implants are alien to track you. They're like tracker mm -hmm. implants. And some of it could be, I mean, the implants in my brain, that didn't look nothing like what Dr. Lear pulled out out of people physically. Right. Physically, like my implants were nanotech, small, less than microscopic. You can't pick it up with an MRI scan or a CT scan. So what Dr. Lear was pulling out of people was pretty much encased in metals, not from earth. Small things that uh, had liquid and gel around it as well, from what yeah. I recall. So those are more like trackers, what mm. he was removing from people, tracking devices. And, and um, it has to be close to the bone or something in your body. Right. To attach to it and kind of like stay there. It's very small, so it looks like a cyst or like some kind of a growth mm -hmm. inter right. um, That's what it's picked up as when you do an X-ray or an MRI or something. So you can see it. 
These SSP programs, the Neuralink implants that they make, you can't see it on a scan, on a physical scan. So um, when it started leaking, I had to do a medical intuitive scan of myself. And I'm like, oh my God, this is not working. I knew I had the, the implants, I knew I had them, but uh, I wasn't aware that they weren't working properly. <laughs> oh. So I'm like, oh my God, I don't wanna lose my, I don't wanna lose my mind. I don't wanna lose my brain. I don't wanna lose my memory. Even those these implants, um, improve my psionic abilities and what I can do, but I don't want them at, in my brain at the cost of frying me eventually, killing right. me potentially. Gone, goodbye. Mm. Uh, if they ever offered me a Neuralink implant, I would say, no, thank you, I don't need that. <laughs> Never yeah, again. I think I'd say the, uh, say the same thing. Uh, Jocko Johnson, uh, the uh, panel here today is uh, Clarence, uh, Rob, Richard, and uh, myself, Omar, and uh, our guest is uh, Elka. Uh, she's uh, been around on the circuit for, for a while. She's got her own show. So uh, maybe, um, you know, after we're done our stream here, go and uh, check her out on, uh, on YouTube. And uh, also, Jocko Johnson says, um, I feel like shit. 24-7 from injuries and osteoarthritis and what the docs call fibromyalgia or fibromyalgia. Fibro fibromyalgia, you mean? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And chronic fatigue. What kind of nanotech or any meds can I take? My injuries are from line of duty health. Well, just keep in mind, nanotech is just being created here on Earth. So it's it's being um, it's not available to us. It's it's in the stages of being uh, tested and stuff. But it, you can't infuse yourself with nanomedicine right now. Mm -hmm. It's in the research stages. So from what I understand, I have done research on. Uh, the efficacy of using immunoglobulin therapy for fibromyalgia. I've done the research because I had somebody contact me asking, how do you treat fibromyalgia? So I would say immunoglobulin therapy for the fibromyalgia and the fatigue. Would uh, psychic surgery work for something like that? I think healing, yeah. Ener well, psychic surgery, keep in mind energy healing. Psychic surgery I do when implants need to be removed or when you've broken your leg or your joints, mm -hmm. but general energy healing would work for the fatigue and the fibromyalgia. Okay, awesome, awesome. And the IVIG or SCIG because fibromyalgia, I found some articles um, that SCIG and IVIG human plasma do treat fibromyalgia, joint pain, fatigue, all that stuff. Um, fibromyalgia, I think, is autoimmune based in some sense. So you could treat it as such. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now, is there any thing that you can tell us about the um, secret space program that, uh, that most people would not be uh, aware of? Like, I'm sure like most people have the understanding of a, uh, a secret space program or like a runaway civilization. Um, is there like some information that people don't know that uh, they should know? Well, um, you never know when you can be taken and by who. So um, keep, keep awareness of what happens on earth because um, well, if you've seen shows like Star Trek Picard or Emergence, mm -hmm. nanotechnology in building human cyborgs, these corporations on Earth are trying to do the same stuff. So it is starting to become more visible what's on Earth and what's on Mars. A lot of this stuff is being disclosed through movies of what the, the SSPs are doing. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Disclosure happens in different forms and in different ways. So I would say keep a watch out for some shows do disclose a lot that you can get about the SSPs inadvertently find out. Um, I've been watching Star Trek Picard and Emergence. Also the Rook. Um, 
Some of these black ops programs use uh, people as psychics, psionic abilities to do the work for them. Just like they do on Mars, they do here on Earth as well, the British programs. So that's something interesting inadvertently. Some, some of the programs here on Earth are similar to the SSPs in some ways, that they use psychics for work, to work for them. So that's something some people might not know about. And the show The Rook really discusses that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Cool. You guys got uh, any questions? Let's uh, bring the panel onto the uh, screen here, Clarence. Sure. Let me see if I can get everybody set up here. Uh, there we go. I'm just looking, uh, looking for some questions in here. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> Rob said he'll be back in a few minutes. He had to do something. <laughs> uh, Jocko says, uh, take the last two, but have no idea what the first one is. Does it have another name? Uh, not really quite sure what you're referring to there, uh, Jocko. I, I don't understand either. What can? What is the question? Yeah, I'm just trying to... It was when you were talking about something about fibromyalgia. You mentioned something that could help him, and he got the first two, but not the last two things. Okay, IVAG and SCAG. Okay. Immunoglobulin, IV. immunoglobulin plasma treatment. It's either intravenous immunoglobulin therapy or subcutaneous yes. immunoglobulin therapy. Wow. I've read articles that say you can use immunoglobulin therapy to treat fibromyalgia. Because I had somebody contact me and ask me, how do you treat fibromyalgia, like physically? Nothing works on me. You have fibromyalgia? Yep. I'm diabetic, so. I've got diabetic, uh, fibro what are they called? Uh, diabetic, what is that? Chaco knows. <clears throat> Because there's, uh, yeah, okay. there's, there's three stages of diabetes. Like, do um, you still produce your own insulin? I take uh, metformin. Okay. Uh, so. So I what, still produce a little. Okay. But type you have, two. Yeah, type two. All right, cool. <clears throat> thank you very much, El. Oh, thank uh, you, guys. We, uh, Really appreciate your time here uh, this morning and, uh, and all the information that uh, you've given us and the questions that you've answered. Uh, it's a lot to uh, lot to absorb, as always is in uh, in all the shows. Usually, I go back and I watch them again, and you hear something new and uh, that you didn't, uh, you know, hear during the show, and you get more questions. And so, well, hopefully, I, I have a question for Rich. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So in the beginning, when you introduced yourself, you say you try to verify people if they're lying or not, right? Sometimes. Yep. What are your thoughts about me? Uh, it's all bullshit. You think it's bullshit? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That's, that's fine. No, um, no, I just wanted to say and get out of the way. Uh, I don't believe any of that secret stuff base program stuff because nobody ever comes back with the, and I mean it with full respect I don't hate anything about you I don't know you but I just don't like that nobody ever has any proof and uh, I don't buy it I just can't get into it I, I've tried I've looked into it I've talked to the guys I know I know their history I Corey Good and David Wilcock I'm talking about and anybody else even Asagio saying they've been in this program come back with no proof so I just have very hard time with it. And that's fine. Uh, I know. Probably, you probably don't have most people asking you what they what you think of them. No, they do. Uh, we, we get to that point. They, they said, do you believe what I'm telling you? I'm like, no, but I, it's interesting because yeah. maybe someday 
you guys will bring back evidence and I will look the fool. And I want to be the fool. Well, but I, it, I definitely need evidence when people make these tremendous claims. Yeah, we can't give you what you want. We never can because of we're course. not allowed to bring it back. But what? why? how can you be able to come out live and put your face out there for the world to know about the secret space program without being dead? It's not. If it's that important, you wouldn't be able to talk. Oh, but they don't kill us. Why would they kill us? This is secret. So why kill somebody who's spouting <laughs> off uh, conspiracy theories? Okay. Well, I mean, the that, that's a nice are. hole to get out of it. I understand that. Well, I'm but... not trying to get out of anything. Uh, I am what I am, and I've been through what I've been through. You can put I me understand. through even um, like on Gaia TV, what they've done is put people through a polygraph, polygraph lie detector test but that's not going to give you much because if the person believes they were in this program, it'll come. They'll pass the test because they believe it. That's the funny thing about a polygraph. But yeah, that's a polygraph. But there's also the human element, which you cannot avoid, especially when you talk for 45 minutes. You yeah. give off body signals that tell me there's a lot of deception in, and mm -hmm. you're not even quite sure about yourself. Well, you're almost looking like you're forcing yourself not oh, to I'm not forcing myself look up anything. to the I, I know. I know. You're not. Yeah. Um, but I'm just saying I look yeah. on, on body language too, uh, you know, facial expressions, things of that nature. No, yeah, I said you were very good. You, you speak well and all you guys do. And because it's something you've been saying over and over and over and over and over again. So I understand. Um, but I need proof. That's all it is. It has nothing yeah. to do with you personally. I just like the proof. That's all. Yeah. And um, that's the interesting part, because I wanted to ask you, what do you think of people? You Do you think I'm lying? Do you think I'm telling untruths? I already said what I had to say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not afraid to engage with anybody. If you don't believe me, that's fine. I really don't care. If I if I asked you one question, where can, can I get where where can I get proof? Well, uh, the proof is in the pudding. What's being done in Neuralink? They're making Neuralink implants. Right, but They're where's the proof things. that it came from there? That I need a paper trail too. I know. can't give you that because I don't have that. I don't have the, just like Randy Kramer, just like Tony Rodriguez, like Corey Good. I can't give you that because I don't have that. All I have is memories of what I did. I know our, that. I know that's tough for you too. Yeah. I know you go through a lot of people like me, but I, I, I totally okay. respect. I don't disrespect you at all. I respect what you're, you're saying. Your message. It's got to be said, because I could be wrong. I know that. So well, just with that being said. Uh, the human nature is any one of us could be wrong. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. And you know, also from the perspective of uh, killing the, uh, the the messenger, so to say, you know, really all that would do would be to um, justify it, I guess. Uh, you know, the conspiracy theorists out there, you know, they would be they'd be more on the line with, um, you know, look, this person was talking about the secret space program and uh, now this person's uh, end up dead. So there has to be, you know, some truth to it or they shot this person or they killed that person out of whatever reason. So, you know, I, I can see that, uh, that aspect of it as well myself. And, um, you know, like, I, like I've always said, you know, I, I just take all the information and I just allow it to build, 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 build. And then, uh, and then there's always that tipping scale, right? From uh, you know whether you know it's uh, real or it's not. You know, for me, I don't really dismiss anything. I take it all and I put it in the back, and then I say, okay, well, let's let allow this to build on here. See if there's more information. And as more information comes along, then uh, you know we can you know all use our common sense and try to uh, put it all together, right? That's kind of yeah, kind of what my thought on the on the process is, right? Because you know, personally, I haven't spoken to too many people that are involved in the uh, secret space program. So for me, you know, it's more of a, you know, a new topic, right? So for me, you okay. know, the more I talk to people like Elle, then, uh, you know, the more information that I myself am accumulating. And, uh, you know, and I just put that in the back and then go back later and, you know, try to uh, cross-reference and, you know, kind of like connect the dots, right? And, and see what's what because uh, you know the secret space program it's indeed it's very confusing 
You know, yes. I do know that something something like this does exist. I I realize that, right? And you know, with these um, you know sixteen and back and twenty and back and ten and back, you know, that's something that I really, really, really have a hard time uh, wrapping my head around. You know, it's uh, not saying that you know it's not true or it's true. It's just simply I have a a very hard time as to you know how can we go back ten years and then be brought back and then be taken back again and then brought back and then taken back. Like Corey Good says, he's been taken back like three or four times, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, when, when I hear him talking about that going back three, four times, you know, then, then I wonder to myself, uh, you know, like, how is this happening, right? Is, uh, is the question really that comes to my mind. How about a lump sum of a 16 back all in one shot and you're back and you're sick and you're... You don't know how to live on earth, but that's fine. Um, I like to see proof. So when I made my cat poop with the energetic healing and it looked disgusting, it felt disgusting and it was there in the cat litter box, that's proof for me. Of well, what that's I good did. for you, but that doesn't help anybody else who wants to believe, you know? Yeah, well, when you're doing an energy healing, now I'm not talking about the SSP with energy healing, that's also like, how do you quantify that? How do you prove that? Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's possible subconsciously you saw your cat was getting ready to go to the bathroom and you thought, maybe I'll try this. And that's how it happened. He just was going to do it anyway. And you just took a hold and helped maybe. Who knows? The cat was constipated. She wasn't going to the bathroom at all. No, I said maybe the cat looked like it was about to go, you know, so maybe you assisted. It wasn't. That's the problem. She wasn't going. So. Oh, oh, oh. well, I'm yeah. not. Okay, all right. The problem was she wasn't going. Either I go to the vet where I get a diuretic or I could just, I could do energy healing and my mom asked me to do it and I overdid it and I ended up cleaning diarrhea and poop and <laughs> all over the floor in the house. So I overstimulated the cat. So I could take, I could have taken pictures of the result and result of what I did. And I took full responsibility for what I did to my cat too much of. So um, I'm not lying about that. That actually happened. I People can believe me about this, this fear or not. I really don't care. You can call me whatever you want. I really don't care. I'm not here to prove or disprove anything. I'm just sharing my story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. And I appreciate that, Elle. Um, I really do. Um, you know, for me, you know, I'd like to learn more about the secret space program, right? It's really my end goal, right? Um, and the way I see it is, uh, you know, the more people you talk to, the more you learn. And uh, the more you learn, the more knowledge base you have, and uh, you can cross the dots later on. And as I've stated this entire show, you know, I, I never dismiss anything. I put it in the back burner and I just allow it to accumulate. And, yeah. uh, and then from there, you know, my, my only interest is to, to learn. Like yeah. uh, people who have had contact and people who haven't had contact and what type of contacts people are having is really at the end of at the end of the day is what my uh, what my goal is, right? Uh, I'm not out to disprove anyone or to prove anything, right? For me, it's just um, you know all about information, right? Yeah. Uh, what type of information can I get and uh, how can I use that information to yeah. uh, you know enhance my knowledge set and and. For you guys to ask me, like your honesty too. So yeah. kudos to that. Well, <laughs> you guys were, were asking me about Corey Good a lot. I actually do believe that he was in the secret space program because the way he's behaving that shows a lot of programming actually, and mm -hmm. we're programmed in the space program to cause chaos and mayhem on Earth. That's programming. So um, how we control that programming and deal with it is also important in our actions. Sometimes what the person projected, projects outside and does might not be of his own free will and choice, and it's the programming running in your head to what you present and what you do and, you know, how you act as a person. <clears throat> Don't look just at the testimony of the person. Look at the person themselves and what they're presenting to the world, not just the testimony. That's what I learned with Corey. You look at the person. Why is Corey the way he is? Why am I the way that I am? What made us the way we are? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
what does that? How can you explain that? That's something else that these programs do to people. They program minds to warp you. That's something I usually don't like to discuss, but um, the programming is there. It's just how do I act? Why do I act the way that I do? Why do I do what I do? And interact with people in the world. That's something else, the psychological factor that has to be looked at in all of this stuff. Clarence, do you have any uh, anything to add? Uh, not really. I'm just trying to take it all in. You know, I mean, it's it's really, you know, I'm glad she's here. Uh, you know, there's a lot. Let me get my cam back. I'm sorry about that. Uh, for some reason. There we go. <laughs> uh, chit chatting with the other guests there. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, she's having problems getting her cam running, so I may have to do something different. But that's that's I ain't gonna worry about it. But anyway, um, yeah. Um, what can I say? My mind is like, mm, you know. <laughs> yeah, I hear you every time. Yeah, a lot every of information there, a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm definitely, uh, I'm definitely going to get back with you. I want to get more in depth with you on different things, you know, and stuff and, and, and see, uh, you know, what I can come up with or whatever. But uh, fascinating. Definitely fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, lots of, lots of information. Well, any information to me is good information. I, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you, know, you just take it one step at a time and, you know, we go from there. So that's, you know, but uh, wow, that's awesome. And I know that there's other people out there that that have basically the same kind of things going on. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. We, we all cool. have something going on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, you know, when I tell people about visitations and stuff like that, you know, and whatever, uh, you know, either they believe or they don't, you know what I mean? It, so, you know, what do you do with that, you know? Um, <laughs> I, I don't care one way or the other if somebody believes me or not. I have, no, I have, yeah, yeah. I've had to learn to grow with thick skin and just... If you don't believe me, it's fine. It's human nature to believe or disbelieve or not believe at all. It sure, sure, yeah. Skepticism well, is always a big thing with you know. Well, it's a human trait. I mean, that's yeah. you know, so yeah. That's and cool. again, um, like what they've tried to do with people on on shows to do the polygraph test. Hmm. If a person believes they were in it, they'll pass it. <laughs> so uh, that, yeah, well, yeah. Power of thought. Yeah. I agree with that. Where's that proof? You're not going to get any proof with a... Well, no, it's, I want somebody to take the test and see if they pass it, but nobody's taking it. Oh, sure. You can put me on it. I'll sweat like a pig and I'll be anxious and nervous. And... That, there it is. That's the excuse. But I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> I don't want to take it. it if you already think you're going to be nervous and sweating because you're telling me that I'm not going to be telling the truth. Natural. You should be calm and you should be ready and no sweat. I have, I have anxiety disorder, so I'm always nervous oh, well, and sweaty. That seals that up in a nice button. No, it doesn't? does. No, it doesn't. But I take the test. <laughs> I have a uh, I have a solution to this. Um, Elle lives down in uh, Vancouver, which is uh, not too far from me. Um, I live up in uh, up in Kamloops, a few hours from me, and uh, maybe once this uh, this COVID um, detention is over. Uh, maybe we can uh, hook up in Vancouver and, um, you know, and do a one-on-one uh, -on -one interview. And then maybe we can get like a polygraph or something set up so that, um, you know, we can do that experiment and, you know, and, yeah. and see where it goes from there, right? That's yeah. kind of, you know, my thing to that. Sure. And that's kind of cool that you're nearby as well. So Yeah, well, I mean, uh, if you want to pay for that thing, I'll do it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we'll... Uh, Run some sort of uh, fundraiser here on uh, on our. I'll street. donate to it just uh, to see it done. You know, yeah, <laughs> whether really. she passes or not. <laughs> yeah, I'd yeah. like to see that Seriously. myself. I mean, that's just, you know, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I'm game. <laughs> that would be fun. I love experiments. Yeah. yeah. Um, the polygrapher will see that I'm very anxious. Mm -hmm. That I have anxiety. The polygrapher will see that right away because. Um, I had a brain spec done, and it shows that I'm prone to anxiety and depression because mm. my cerebral perfusion has increased. So I can send you all that. 
Cool. And uh, the polygrapher will see anxiety. <laughs> Yeah, and they're, they're pretty good with that too, right? Because these yeah. guys are testing murderers and rapists and all that shit, right? So they know when somebody is uh, trying to evade them, right? Oh, and yeah. they can tell when somebody has anxiety or is just nervous or, you know, whatever the case may be. They're able to pinpoint all that. Yeah, um, well, I can, so. I can honestly tell you that I'm prone to anxiety and depression because that's what my body does, um, yeah. whether I'm anxious or not. It happens more often than it should. Yeah. And, and I'm telling the truth about it because it's even in my brain spec. Mm -hmm. So, um, now, do you have a regular website or, or just a YouTube channel uh, that you? The website is Messages from a Star Traveler, and the YouTube channel is Awakening Cosmic Reality Show. Okay. I, I can see I kind of pissed off Rich. No, 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 Rich. You know, Rich has been doing Me, this for man? a lot, a lot of years. No, he just, no, no, he ain't pissed at all. I He's turned off the camera because yeah. I wanted to vape, and I don't vape okay. on the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, so, he, he's a good guy. I, Don't worry about that. He's he, you know. rich. <laughs> she's not worried about me. You know. I'm not worried about you because um, I've been wanting to take a lie detector I, test. I can hear it. How that works. Yeah. Cool. I hear everything that's going on. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean that's well, good. Uh, I maybe we'll see about that. Yeah, I love we'll contact tests. you. Absolutely. I, okay. I, yeah. I love experiments and tests. I mean, look. I would love it. Yeah, yeah, with you. Yeah, I'll see if I like that personally. Just to say I've done it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, just to say, yeah, I was part of something like that and I've done it. And I'll you know, see if so I can arrange it. Interesting. We'll try to do a fundraiser here on uh No, on no, Facebook. I got I got somebody who can do it, I think. Yeah, right on. Yeah, yeah. In Vancouver? I don't know if he if you can go yeah, maybe. Uh, he's in New York, so I don't know. I'll find everything out, but it probably okay. won't happen. Oh, that'd be cool. We'll I've see if there's a way. I've contacted polygraphers and uh, th <clears throat> 300 to 600 bucks. I'm like, how yeah. much? This one's 700, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the price. I've actually... Um, We've got a base set up then. Yeah. Well, it's... I mean, people should really take this because... Um, They'll pass the questions that they believe what they're saying. That they'll pass on because um, so, and it, it naturally shows the polygrapher can tell your behaviors and your language and if you're nervous yeah. or if you're upset or, you know. They're um, truth tellers, yeah. They're mm -hmm. truth I've done the research about it. I'm like, wow, I love to be compared with Corey Good on the polygraph <laughs> test. Yeah, if we can get both of you side by side, that'd be cool. <laughs> oh, right. Well, the polygrapher has to be really good and independent and certified too. I yeah. mean, um, they got thirty-five Randy, years. Yeah, good. They got Randy Kramer to do a polygraph on Gaia, and supposedly it came out that he's telling the truth. And I like Randy Kramer. Not mm -hmm. sure about the polygrapher. He wasn't certified at some point for the, to do the work. Right. What I read. So uh, make sure he's certified. He's still doing it. He's in the business. Polygraphs are so easy to read. You don't really need to be certified, really, honestly. You just have to know how to put on the cuff, read the lines. I mean, it's the easiest thing you've ever done. Yeah, but is, this guy, is he certified? Is your guy certified? Oh, 35 years, New York City okay. Court. Yeah. Okay, good. I'd like certified. to see that. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, if you if if you get me a polygrapher, I better see the certification papers because I'm looking for a pro. Honestly <laughs> speaking, so we're looking for the truth. Get okay. yeah. There you go. Well, uh, <laughs> You're a good sport. Happen. You're a good sport. Oh, I like to I like to play. If if you want to put me on the hot spot, I'll put you on one as well. <laughs> that, that can't happen. It'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all good people. Yeah, yeah. Really. we're all having a good time. It's yeah. it's a, it's it has to be an open discussion. So yeah, um, yeah, obviously, honesty is the uh, is the best way about going going about things. You know, it's uh, yeah. especially when you come into a uh, subject such as this, right? Like UFOs and alien abductions and such, where you know people don't have the proof. Right, like I could say the same thing to Clarence. Right, Clarence yeah, totally. said, you know, 
abducted. And I'd be like, well, show me the proof. Mm -hmm. Right. And then Clarence would be like, well, I don't have any proof. And then I could say, OK, well, you're either bullshitting me or you're not. Right. So it's really up to the person that how they disseminate the information. But you and, know what? I'll take a polygraph test any day. Yeah. And they don't bother me at all. I appreciate <laughs> your uh, honesty. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that. Uh, yeah, the honest, yeah. yeah, the honest thing is Clarence would pass because he believes that it happened to him. That's well, the I know it happened to me. I don't yeah. have to believe it. I live it. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that's why you'll pass. It's it's. Um, yeah. If people lie, if you say, if you ask me, did I murder anybody? Not that I remember on Earth, but I might have on Mars. Right. Don't ask me that. Don't yeah. ask me that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a tough question. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's also experiential. On Mars, you might have killed somebody. On Earth, you never did. Right. In these programs, you can be programmed to do anything. That's another thing. Wow. I might never have killed anybody on Earth, but I might have on Mars. <laughs> Let's say in that program, would you have recollection of that of that specific incident if they programmed you to do it? I have memories of being programmed to be a assassin. That's what I have memories of. Wow. Um, the polygrapher, I asked the polygrapher in the email question. They're like, well, um, so if we ask you this question, did you ever murder anybody on Earth? You would pass. Yes, because I've never murdered anybody on Earth, but... I don't know for sure if I did on Mars because I have the assassins training for it, but I don't know if I killed anybody on Mars or not. I'm too afraid to look into that memory mm. to find out I if I did or know. not. Well, I would want to know. Just saying. That's uh, me, though. <clears throat> well, I have a predilection for collecting semi-automatic rifles, military style. <laughs> wow. And swords and battle axes, and I have a whole war room of that stuff. So what does that tell you about me? That you like uh, weapons? weapons? I do like weapons. I sure do. But I don't see you with the submachine gun or anything you mentioned. I don't see you using those in defense. So maybe you just hold them. I hold them, yes. And I like them and I pet them and I play with them. But I, I don't wipe them out on YouTube because that's wrong. Yeah. Uh, that's wrong to do, but I, I've moved four times and lugging that around is a pain in the ass because it's heavy. <laughs> it has to be stored correctly in safes and it has to be in a locked room because if somebody um, comes in to steal it, whew, if they steal it, you're in a world of shit. Because you, you have to is report that, is that a Is that an M16 or you're just happy to see me? No, I have, I, I have uh, FNFS uh, bullpups. That's what I have. Um, if it's stolen, you're in a world, you have to report it to the police. They come in, they do the fingerprints, they do the, you know, their check. You have oh, to have sure. serial numbers. You have to have photographs of your weapons, what was stolen. Um, so you have to have a full inventory. And uh, got my dad addicted to weapons too, so... <laughs> he was in the Russian military, so he has his own collection. I have mine, and uh, we did have a break-in one time, so now we had to take photos of all of that stuff and serial numbers. Cool. Because when the police investigate, they want to know what was stolen and how much. Right. Turns out it was a biker gang, but they didn't get the weapons because it's all locked up in safes. Wow. But they <laughs> did get the biker gang a month later. They were living down the street. Damn. They left knives at every entry point in the house. Our kitchen knives, the good German ones. Jesus. <laughs> nice guys. <laughs> wow. Um, oh, wow. So we, yeah. so we can say you've had a pretty eventful life then. Oh, yeah. I've, I've, had, I've, I've had a fun life. Definitely not the quiet type. That's for sure. I'm not the quiet type. Never was, never will be. <laughs> cool. So, yeah. All right, cool. Thank you very much, Al. I uh, appreciate you. your time, the information that uh, that you've given us. And uh, I'll be in contact with you uh, sure. for sure. Um, you know, we uh, exchange messages every now and then. 
Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try to do a, uh, a fundraising campaign here on our channels and uh, see if I can raise uh, seven, eight hundred bucks and then uh, see if we can get a hold of a, a polygraph guy and, uh, you know, maybe we can hook up in Vancouver and we'll do a uh, live stream from there and uh, come on and see what happens, right? Yeah. That's really all we can do and speculate and, you know, talk and really that's, uh, that's all we can do. So I really appreciate your time and, uh, you know, the appreciate information. appreciate your story too, well. We appreciate yeah, your story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We all do, yeah. That was yeah. Cool. Oh, it's the weirdest story out there that I've seen because, uh, and I've asked this a million times, um, do SSB assets have predilection of weapons collection? Mm. That's something else I've noticed. Somebody always has a little bit of a stash of something because in the training you are trained to, to have weapons and use weapons. So that's always what I'm on the lookout for, motorcycles, weapons, predilections you know do you do you act out what you did before in your human stuff in your human life and i did i did act it out i started collecting weapons so um how do you explain a war room <laughs> you like uh, weapons yeah I, yeah <laughs> Yeah. Well, I never liked weapons until those memories started to surface, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, so there's there's things I look for when I interview SSP assets, too. People's actions, predilections, what you're into, what you do, why you do it. That has an impact on human social behavior. If you've had programming from abductions, SSB stuff, why do you do what you do? So hmm. I like human to condition. You're into the human condition. Oh, very much so, because what makes you you is part of your experiences, whether that's a human life, whether that's ET abductions, SSP, whatever. It all makes you part of who you are. And I like to explore that and investigate that too. Awesome. Yeah, so just that's what I would, what I look into when I interview other people as well. What makes you tick? What makes you you? What, why are you sharing your story? So that's what interests me and why I do what I do as well. Elle, the questions come up a couple of times before you go. Sorry if I'm sure. keeping you here, but. They were asking again, what did you do for them in the SSP? What did you do again? I don't know if I remember it. it was I, worked a while. In the, I worked in the cybernetics labs making human cyber soldiers. That's what I did. What was your specific duty though? Did you put you know, like the arms together? I don't know. Or... Yeah, I inspected body parts, tissues. I put soldiers into the holographic medical pods for rejuvenation, regeneration. If you have your limbs blown off, it would regenerate that. So I basically did it in the lab, cybernetics lab. That's what I did. And uh, I also played around with biological drug serums and I was injected with biological drug serums, genetics as well. So So when you say you were injected, did yes. you do it voluntarily or do they Yes, no, okay. it was voluntarily because I have an autoimmune condition and that continued on Mars too. Okay. So I voluntarily inject myself to this day on Earth. Oh, wow. Okay. But I got from the hypnosis. That's the funny part. I got that from the hypnosis. So uh, how would I know that? I'm not a medical person. I don't have any medical training. And yet I'm addicted to medicine and I'm addicted to trying to make myself healthier. That's my addiction. Okay. Uh, you, you could almost say I've been obsessed with it for six years. Like, why would I be obsessed with hypnosis notes and memory retrieval? Why do I do that for others? Like, why do I do what I do and act the way I am? What's behind it? Why do well, you, you, do you would have to do? tell us. You no, would have to tell us uh, I'm we, we're not standing in your yeah. shoes. <laughs> I'm, every time I do hypnosis for others, every time I do it on myself, memory retrieval, past life, regression, whatever, I want actionable intel out of those people's memories to, to, to get something that could be done here, made here, 
makes me frustrated because I can't. They just have memories of all these experiences and that's about it. What's I different? Learned. What's different? Last question for me. I'm sorry. I just want yeah. to know this for me. What's different? What were you before this happened? What were you, what changed so much? Seven, what were you doing seven years ago that was so different from now? I was a library technician working in a library. That's what I was doing seven years ago. Okay. Oh, that's, that's interesting. I'm also trained as a shaman, as a healer. That's what I was. Before this, uh, before the. Before, yes. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. And then it uh, started yes. popping out. Well, I, I'm interested in memories. I'm interested to find out why people do what they do, why they are the way they are. Um, and who, who, again. Did, who did you study under with, with your salmon? Leonard Howell. He's passed away si since, but uh, he did my training. Hmm. Past life, um, I did the hybrid hypnosis because I wasn't just interested in past life. So I had to do a bit of a practicum. He allowed me to do hybridization of the past life and the hypnosis together. Hmm. So, I uh, totally hear you on uh, why people do what they do and to understand them. Um, as you know, some people that know me, they know that uh, I'm extremely interested in uh, serial killers uh, murderers, uh, serial rapists, things like that. And, you know, I really, I study that a lot in the effort to try to find out what pe what makes people tick and why do they do the things that they do, All right? Like for instance, a serial killer, like why would a person even do that? You know what I mean? Like why, why kill someone and then enjoy it and then carry on with that you know, bad behavior, you know, for me, that's very interesting. And you know, it kind of uh, points to everyone in that uh, line of thought as to like why people do what they do. So I'm with you on that, Al. I'm totally interested in why people do shit. Well, serial <laughs> killers, there's a few reasons why they kill. It could be a chemical imbalance in the brain that makes you psychotic and sociopath. That's why you kill. It could be your upbringing. What if your dad did that and now you do it because that's the influence and you mimic. Or you're just a warped person who enjoys doing that. There was no outside influences for it. Yeah, I call, them phantom, I call them phantom people uh, where the, um, the energy of the person, our essence, has, um, uh, I guess, evacuated the avatar Right, abandon the avatar, and because the avatar has to carry through the uh, laws of physics from uh, you know cradle to grave, that uh, when the soul, I guess, layman's way of calling it would be a soul, uh, when the when the energy leaves, that avatar still needs to carry on, uh, you know, the uh, daily life things, but there's no driver behind the wheel, and uh, most of these guys, when they you know engage in that type of activity are, um, you know, for me, I, I feel that uh, there's nobody behind the wheel and that's why they're doing what they're doing because a human being has empathy and, uh, and, and wouldn't even dream of uh, killing someone or raping someone or harming someone or torturing someone. So for me, you know, I'm more into the fact that, um, you know, their energy consciousness has uh, left the avatar and that's why they engage in the type of behavior that they do. But sometimes they're not born with em empathy. Their brain is, the brain chemicals are not there. They're born like that. And as they get older, they kill too. So there's so many different factors. There's the soul and there's also, some people take uh, drugs that make them, you know, sociopaths. Sometimes mm -hmm. drugs do that to people as well. There's so much that can make you do that. Your soul has vacated or it's something physically on earth, or you were just born that way. I know that, uh, that people that are born like that, uh, you know, with no empathy, I feel that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that the, the energy, the infinite consciousness, the pinpoint of it has decided not to engage with that particular avatar uh, for, you know, whatever reason that it may have. 
uh, you know, maybe the avatar is faulty or, you know, that's not what they, you know, wanted to begin with. So, you know, they just chose to, uh, you know, abandon that avatar. Sometimes it results in a, in a stillbirth and uh, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, when it doesn't, uh, you know, that avatar continues from cradle to grave and is going to just be in that survival mode of, you know, just doing shit without really understanding. Because a lot of these serial killers, what they have in common is you ask them, why did they do it? They all say, I don't know. I was told to do this. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's some sort of an entity or some sort of uh, a thought process that is embedded into their mind that uh, that tells them that, hey, you need to do this or go do that. Like, uh, you know, son of Sam. Right. He would say that uh, the neighbor's dog told him to go and uh, go and kill. Ted Bundy right. said he didn't know why he killed. Uh, Joel Rifkin said he didn't know why he killed. Right. So there's like, you know, too many um, uh, examples of these guys that, you know, said that they don't know why they did what they did. And then most some of them say they were told to do this. Right. So, um, you know, I feel that uh, there's, you know, something bigger going on in the picture than, uh, you know, than just serial killing and stuff like that. But we're really getting off topic here with the uh, <laughs> UFOs but, and ETs and, uh, well, and serial killing. <laughs> serial killers can be on topic because there's voice to skull technology, synthetic mm -hmm. AI that can tell you to kill. And that's part yeah. of the black ops programs who do this type of thing. There's um, targeted individual, they're targeted with energy weapons, they're mind controlled, manipulated. So it sort of connects. If you want to dive, circle, in, Omar. dive in, yeah. dive in into, <laughs> it's true, you know, it, yeah. it, there's well, a connection. So there, a lot of people are talking voice to skull technology and that you are programmed to do things. So that's something else that can make you kill. If you get a program and you can't control yourself, that like MK Ultra. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can see that. I can totally mm. see that. You can All right, I'll thank you. Thank <laughs> you for your time. Uh really appreciate it.